Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and in this video, which is part of my Lauren's Top Tips sewing series, I'm going to be chatting to you all about sewing machine needles, what the different ones are, how to change them and how often you should be changing them. So if you are watching this video and thinking, I don't even know what type of needle is in my sewing machine, let alone the last time I changed it, then you're definitely not alone. It can be quite overwhelming, especially when you start when you first start sewing, kind of get to grips with all the different needles and what they mean. And I think a lot of people probably just keep the same needle in their machine and hope for the best until a problem happens or the needle breaks and you're sort of forced to change it. So hopefully after this little video today, things will just be a little bit clearer and you'll get into better habits in terms of changing your needle regularly and also using the right needle as well. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to actually change the needle in the sewing machine. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that on the machine that is here. This is the Brother Innovus VQ2, which is more of a higher spec machine, but the mechanics of how you change the needle is the same on the other models of Brother sewing machine that I've used, which are like more sort of mid to lower range ends of the kind of range of sewing machines. So. Um, even though this is on a fancier machine, hopefully it will still be useful in terms of you working out how to change it on your machine. So when you do come to change the needle, you can see to the right hand side of the needle, there's this little sort of black knob here and it's a bit like a screw, so it's got a kind of slit in it at the end and you can either grip it with your fingers or the machine might come with a little tool like this one does that just helps you to turn it and it gives you more purchase on it so you can tighten that little screw a bit a bit tighter and um, but if you if you can get enough grip then so i usually use my right hand to turn the screw and then i'll have my left hand in position to catch the needle because when you loosen that little screw the needle's going to drop out and you want to get ready to catch it so it doesn't fall down into the machine so that's how you take the needle out and you'll see that on the back of the needle there's this sort of flat section to it here so when you come to put the needle back in again, make sure that that flat bit is towards the back of the machine. And then you just need to um, push it up into that, that section, push it up as far as you can. It's important that it's in the fully sort of raised position when you do this. And then just tighten that little screw. Again, if you feel like you're not getting a good grip on it, then it is good just to use the little tool that comes with the machine. Um, and it just minimizes the chance of the needle actually falling out. So that's how you actually change your needle. Now, in terms of how often you change it, this can be quite a bit of a woolly area, but there's certain things that you can look out for to sort of help you with that. So generally speaking, I mean, good practice would be, say approximately every like three to four projects of using the same needle, you might want to change it, but it depends what the project's using. Obviously some projects are really quick and there's not actually that much sewing in the machine involved if it's just like a little top or something. Uh, whereas if it's something much more involved, like you're making trousers with much thicker fabric, then obviously the needle gets more use then. So you have to kind of use your judgment or look out for certain signs that the needle just might not be as sharp as it should be anymore. So I've found that the more I kind of got used to my sewing machine, I could start to actually hear when the needle wasn't sharp anymore. And it's almost makes like a louder noise as it's making the stitches. And it's because the needles having to force through the fabric a bit more rather than being able to kind of pierce it, if you like. So you can, you can sort of listen out for a different, if the machine just sounds a little bit different. And um, the other thing that can happen is you might get skipped stitches. So that can just be a sign that the needle needs changed. Or it might be that you've been making a much more involved project, like say you made, you were making a coat or a jacket or something, you were using quite a thick, heavy fabric and you were doing, a, you know, there was a lot of seams to sew within the project. What, what I found can sometimes happen, especially with thicker fabric, is that without you realising it or sort of being aware of it, is that the needle can actually become a very slightly bent just because it's having to go through so many layers at certain parts of the construction. And that can also affect the stitch quality too and also make kind of funny noises. So even though the needle is sharp, because it might be just a very slightly blunt or sort of distorted because of the sewing that you've been doing, it can also cause problems and then you need to change it to have a new needle. And then of course, you need to change your needle depending on what fabric you're using and also what thread as well. So say you're using top stitch thread, which is much thicker than regular thread, 
then you need to use a top stitch needle. So what I'm going to do now is go through the different sewing machine needles that we stock in my shop. So all of these needles are available online and they are all Prim sewing machine needles. That's the brand, the haberdashery brand that they are. And they are universal, so although they're not tied to a specific brand of machine, they are universal needles and that they've got this flat shank at the back which means that they're you know they're compatible with general domestic sewing machines we do also have a packet of prim round shank needles if your machine does need a round shank but um, in the prim range the range of round shank needles isn't as good as like the standard universal ones so i'm going to go through the different types of the of ones that we have in the shop and then hopefully that will give you a good idea of what one you need for the project and the type of fabric that you're using so the first one the kind of basic one is like the standard universal needle this is for woven fabric and you can get it in various different sizes so you can get a mixed pack which has a range of sizes or you can get if you're going to be sewing a lot with a particular type of fabric then you can also get them in a pack of five where it's like just the one size as well so they actually range from 60 all the way up to 100 so the 60 ones are like for the really really lightweight fabric very very flimsy stuff like very delicate delicate silk and um, that kind of thing 70 just again still going to be lightweight fabric but maybe something just a bit with a little bit more structure to it or if you have to go through more layers the 60 ones are very fine so as soon as you start to have to go through more layers of fabric they can struggle a little bit probably the most common one that you will need to use is the size 80 that's the size that i use the most so as well as having a mixed pack just sort of in my little sewing machine needle pot i've usually always got a pack of 80s as well just because that does the majority of kind of lightish to medium weight woven fabrics next one after that is 90 so if the fabric's a little bit thicker or again you're going through more layers of a thicker fabric then you might need that and then again up to 100 so sometimes you might not know exactly what one you should use and it might be that you don't use a thick enough needle and it breaks or you use a really uh, you use a thicker needle and then you notice that, it, that the hole it's leaving in the fabric as it forms the stitches is just a bit too big and it doesn't look great so you can always just change and the more experience you have with changing the needle you sort of no notice these really subtle differences so the next type of needle are the jeans needles and now these ones differ because they have an extra sharp point and the shaft of the needle is stronger as well so it makes them able to just cope with the thickness and the kind of density of fabrics like denim or it might be like a really thick cotton twill or something like that and they come in a pack of size 90 needles which is a good kind of diameter thickness for that kind of fabric too next ones I've got are top stitch needles and I mentioned them before so top stitch needles need to be used when you use a top stitch thread so that is when the thread is much thicker than regular thread and they differ because the eye of the needle is bigger so it means that there is less resistance as the thread passes through the eye of the needle which means that the tension isn't as high and it means that the balance of the stitches and the stitch definition is much better you probably find that if you use top stitch thread with a regular needle that's got a regular sized eye in it that the tension in the top thread is just a bit too high and you don't get that kind of clarity or sort of uh, separation between the stitches as much so it does make quite a big difference and it is worth the effort to sort of change it over if you are using that thicker thread the next ones are microtex needles and these are also also sometimes known as sharps because they're extra sharp and they have a very very fine slim tip so they're good for fabrics that are extremely densely woven so that's things like foils or artificial leathers or some silks even so if you're finding that the, the machine is struggling to get through those kind of thicker much much denser quite often synthetic fibres as well like if it's a really sort of thick hard dense polyester fabric then the microtex needles can help with that the next ones are the leather needles so as the name suggests they are suitable for <laughs> sewing leather and the difference with these needles is that they almost kind of cut the leather as they pass through it and they come in a variety of sizes as well so they can you can kind of match the thickness of the leather to the the strength or the sort of diameter of the needle as well so so yeah the difference there is just is with the point and that they are kind of cutting through as well as sort of 
piercing the, fat, the leather to make the stitch. And the last ones that I've got to chat to you about are for sewing stretchy and jersey fabric. So there's two that kind of fit into this category. So the stretch needles are for fabrics that, ha that are very, very stretchy, that have a high percentage of stretch fiber in them like spandex. And the difference with these needles is, a, is that the eye of the needle is a little bit higher than normal. So it means that as the stitches are formed, the loop that gets created as the stitches are formed, is a little bit bigger because the eye of the needle is higher and that means that the seam that you sew into these fabrics that are very stretchy has more give in it and it's less likely that the thread is going to snap or kind of pop open. The other sort of defining feature of the stretch needle is that it's got a ballpoint on it as well so it means that as the stitches are formed instead of the needle kind of stabbing or piercing the fabric it pushes through the fibres of the fabric so it just reduces the chances of little holes or ladders forming in the fabric. I've also found stretch needles useful when I was I was sewing a coat once and I had to top stitch around the edge and there was just so many layers of fabric and I was finding I was getting a lot of skip stitches, I was trying lots of different things and then I tried the stretch needle and because that loop is bit slightly bigger as the stitches formed with the stretch needle, it was able to just get through all of the, the thick, thick layers of wool that I had. So um, not the kind of conventional use of the stretch needle but I found it useful in that situation as well and then the jersey needle which is probably the more common one that you'll come across if you're you know if you're making like t-shirts and tops or jersey dresses or jumpers and that kind of thing is the jersey needle so again they come in a different a variety of sizes so the thinner ones are going to be more for like your lightweight viscose or modal type jerseys and then the the thicker the larger needles are gonna be more for like your thicker sweatshirting fabrics. So again, it's just using your judgment and trying to match the size of the needle to the thickness of the fabric. So like the stretch needles, the jersey needles also have that ballpoint on them so that they are pushing, the pushing through the fibers of the fabric rather than piercing or stabbing them. So again, it's just minimizing the chances of little holes forming where you sew your seam. So I hope that you found that useful just in terms of understanding a bit more about the different types of needles that are out there. And the more that you sew, the more that you will realize that it does make a difference having a, good, a nice new sharp needle in your machine. And that, yeah, just generally your stitches look a lot better. So if you've got any questions at all, of course, please just leave them for me in the comments section below. But thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.